Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. If you're struggling with your slice serve, that usually means that you can hit with some slice, but the ball doesn't really curve out wide. And even though the ball has some side spin, it lacks power, so it doesn't really trouble your opponent. And so the end result is that this slow slice serve just sits in the middle of the service box and is very easy to attack. So in today's video, I'll show you how to hit slice serves with more slice a better angle and of course with more power. So the following slice serve drills focus on three elements of the serve that you have to master, which is having good feel for the slice, getting the angle right so that the ball curves outwards and giving the slice serve a good power boost so that your opponent doesn't have time to position well. We're gonna start with a feel based drill, which will also serve as a warm up drill before your main serving session. So here's the first drill that we're gonna do for developing good feel for the slice. You're just gonna use a continental grip and you're gonna slice the ball like this. This drill is gonna serve two purposes. The first one is that you're going to develop very good precision over time of hitting the ball well. You're going to get good feel of how the ball slides or how the strings slide under the ball. And the second reason is that you're going to test yourself if you're ready for more advanced drills that follow in this video. If you're going to be framing the ball too much in this exercise, so you'll do something like this, you might hit one ball and then on the second one you will hit like this and you'll be framing the ball a lot, then you're not ready for more advanced drills. I suggest that you practice drills like this and other drills that develop very good hand-eye coordination and precision so that you can hit the ball cleanly because everything that follows will be more difficult than this. So this is the first progression, just forehand continental grip on the, you're playing forehand slice but with the continental grip. This is progression number one. If you can do this one well, let's try in the air. Can you do this one well? And progression number three, can you alternate forehand and backhand slice? So this one is very difficult. So here's the first drill in slow motion and I want to show you why it's important to do this drill and how we develop the precision. So if we look at this next slice, you can see that when I'm slicing the ball and if I zoom in, there is a very small area of the string bed that is moving towards the ball and I must not hit as I swing my racket towards the ball, so I'm going towards the ball this way. You're slicing the ball. Uh, you have to be very precise not to hit the ball with the bottom edge and not to hit the ball with the top edge. So as you are coming towards the ball, you have this very narrow area of the string bed that needs to hit the ball. And this is quite challenging, of course, when you try it, you will see it. And this is a very similar precise racket movement towards the ball that you will need when you're hitting the same slice type of action above your head. So with this drill, you can start. And this is how you develop that first precision of movements that you can hit the ball cleanly and not frame it, which you're going to need later when you hit the slice serve. Drill number two for slice serves is actually a progression of exercises that you're going to do. We're going to start here close to the net and we're going to try and serve really at a sharp angle. So this drill is based on an exaggeration. We're trying to exaggerate hitting the ball too much on the side so that you get the feel for it and that you get a really good angle. And then we're going to work our way back to the baseline and even closer to the center of the court so that we get into more realistic a position, more realistic situation. The goal is that you slowly progress from the net to the baseline and develop the feel for slicing and for the angle. So the drill goes like this, you can start like this, just like uh, six feet from the net or closer, you choke up on the grip and you don't have to toss all the way up for the serve just here in front of you and you're just trying to hit the ball on the side so that you get this good feel of how to get the right angle and give the ball a lot of side spin. So you can see that my contact is very low and you can see that I can get a good angle. And that's how the player discovers the relationship between how to hit the ball more on the side and how to get the angle and side spin. So usually I have players hit three to five balls 
if they're not complete beginners at each position. So I've hit three balls and now I make a step back. I just increase the distance a bit. I take three more balls and I'm trying to get that angle. So I'm tossing the ball quite well in front of me like this. Not too high, not too much to the side. You can experiment and you will find out on your own where is the right contact point for this specific exercise. So as I go back, I'm now still in the, around the service box. That's the drill that I'm trying to do. So right now, don't think about technique, pronation or anything like that. Just try to get a really good angle, aim really to the left for right-handers from this side. You can still choke up on the grip, toss the ball in front and get it outwards. So I'm still progressing backwards. I've reached now the service line, still doing the same surf from here. Hit three to five balls or more if you feel that you don't have the right feel and then go a step further back. And then somewhere here, at around three quarter distance, you can start switching to the full grip. I would not yet do the full backswing. I would still do from this uh, throwing position, from ready position. I would start from here and try and get a good angle out wide. Going more back. Yeah, that's a nice angle. So I usually take three balls and I just progress, have the player, they can usually hold three balls. Go back to the baseline, maybe try from the baseline, from this angle, See, that's a nice one. Find a nice angle out wide from a throwing position and then eventually have the player start the serve with their backswing, whatever their style is, and try to find that outward angle with a good slice. Hey, just a quick interruption. If you would like to see a player like you execute these drills, so doing the same progressions, going all the way from the net to the baseline and seeing how much they can improve in a few minutes, Plus, if you want to see another drill that I did with my student Alan for developing the slice surf, click the join button below. The video is in the membership section, along with another 120 plus videos on all topics related to tennis. So now that I've reached the baseline, I'm not done yet. Now I have to start shifting more towards the middle. Again, you can practice a little bit just from the throwing position. If you feel, see, this one's a good angle, so you want to simplify your serve and get a good slice angle or you try your whole backswing sequence and then you're going to work your way back towards the middle so if you play doubles you know that you can serve from this position in doubles and you still have a very good angle to hit at and so feel free to practice from here but if you're a singles player then you want to work your way gradually towards the middle so you can start maybe here because the more you are, see that's a very nice slice surf. The more you are at this angle on the side of the court, the better angle outwards you have. Yeah, close one. So these are the progressions that I recommend that you do. This is my favorite slice surf drill because it gives the player very nice progressions from exaggerating too much, getting too much angle and a lot of side spin. And as they work their way back, they're adjusting just based on feel, not too much thinking, not over analyzing. And also they are gradually increasing their power because the distance is increasing and they will feel they need more power. So a lot of adjustments are happening subconsciously without too much thinking. And that's what we all need in this era of information overload on YouTube. So why does your slice serve lack power? Well, usually because you're slicing the ball too much, so there's not enough force coming into the ball. You're coming too much on the side. The other reason is that very common instruction that is not a good one, is incorrect, but is very common, is to tell players to try and carve around the ball, peel the ball, peel the orange and so on. And so the player visualizes as they're coming to the ball, then they visualize coming like this with the racket. And when you're trying to come like this with the racket, there is not enough force into the ball to push it and give it speed, right? So you're, you're kind of doing like this and the ball doesn't get power. So like with all serves, also on the slice serve, 
we use pronation to give the ball power so I'm slicing the ball on the side but I want to go outwards so before I show you the final drill I want to give you one corrective exercise just in case you've been taught a lot to carve around the ball which is not right now what can deceive your eye by the way is that the player can do pronation on the slice serve and then they finish like this with the racket and you see the open racket face you don't see it close like this and you think that the racket went like this around the ball and like this but in reality the racket went out first into pronation and then it came around like this so I wish tennis was easier but it isn't it's there are really complex movements going on here and if you try and simplify them you will probably do it wrong so the drill is very simple and this is also teaching you a slice serve now keep in mind I have like six progressions in my second serve mastery course to teach a slice serve I'm showing you just one exercise I'm not sure it's gonna be enough if you've never hit a slice serve but this is one corrective exercise that might help you so what you need to do is you need to roll the ball like this on your hand and then you let it go and you really consciously pronate outwards after the ball leaves the racket right so you go from here you can roll the ball like this and you just gently go outwards and you're slowly programming pronation into your slice serve so after that you're gonna go here and then you don't have to think about it but just that you realize that you can spin the ball sideways you can give it side spin and you can go outwards with your racket this outward pushing of the racket face is actually giving the ball a lot of force forward and that's what's going to help you hit a slice serve with more power so another reason why you might not be serving slice serves with enough power is that you simply want too much control you're always trying to hit the court and your body is kind of holding back it doesn't want to engage because you are prioritizing putting the ball in so you come on the slice serve and you just kind of serving with your arm you don't engage your legs you don't engage your hips you don't engage your body because you are so worried about missing and you want the slice serve to go in so much but in practice sessions you don't have to worry about it and your goal is to try and engage your body so that you will produce power from the whole body from the whole kinetic chain so what you need to do is you need to stop aiming in the court and to go even one step further don't stand on the service line go further back and just try to hit a slice serve that flies really far so that you you see a curve of the ball and you you free yourself so you go and you hit the ball like this and you free yourself yeah you free yourself so that the ball starts flying now when you allow yourself more freedom to serve your body will very likely start to naturally engage more and you're gonna generate more power from your legs from your hips from your core and so on now if that doesn't happen naturally then be a little bit conscious of it when you go further back right now about three meters behind the baseline about almost 10 feet 8 to 10 feet and from here I'm free there's nothing there I am free and I will be a little bit more conscious to use my knees and my hips and my body rotation and put it into the ball and I'm not aiming anywhere I'm not aiming down in the court I just want the ball to fly and I want to hit it with a bit of slice yeah something like this and I want the ball to go even further let's see if I can make it go you have now released your body you feel power your your body is engaging and now you gradually you work your way back to the baseline while maintaining power so don't immediately revert back to the old control slice serve go let's say something like this I went three feet further and I want to maintain my legs I want to maintain my hips I want to maintain good power and find the angle and I feel okay my body is still functioning fully I'm not holding back and then I go here and I'm serving from here and I'm still trying to find good power I don't worry about hitting the serve in I just want to engage I want to engage into the ball I want to hit a good slice I want to see a curve and I want to maintain full body engagement from the legs to hips and the whole body and then I do it also from the 
baseline. Yeah, that's a nice one. This one a little bit too much, so you see there's constant adjustment going on. But I'm not prioritizing precision, I'm prioritizing power. Power and precision are on the opposite side of spectrum, so right now I want power. I don't worry about precision. And once my power has engaged and I feel that my body is working and that I have good power, then I will start aiming a little bit more and dialing back the power a little bit so that I find the right ratio between precision and power. For those of you that are really analytical and want to know exactly what's happening with the racket face at contact point for a slice serve, what's going on with pronation, I've made a video on that. I recorded the slice serve with 240 frames per second and I also compared it to the flat serve. So I invite you to check out that video now and I will see you next time with another field tennis video.